Good morning from the Philippines. I wanted to do, here in the Philippines, uh, a lot of people buy uh, used secondhand guitars and inexpensive ones. And I wanted to do, uh, a, for, for selfish reasons, a video on what to look for in a secondhand guitar. For that matter, you can say the same thing about a new guitar. And the reason is people bring the guitar to me they're hoping to get me set up to set up the guitar. In many, many cases, they've done very well. They bought a nice secondhand guitar. They saved some, some money for themselves. Uh, I do a setup. Maybe I do a couple of other little things to get the guitar in good shape. Uh, some fret leveling, perhaps in some cases, um, a spa treatment to clean it up and, and get it all working right. Um, uh, but let's talk about some of the things on the guitar that are okay to have less than perfect. None of the things that are not, that, are, that should be very big red flags. I'm gonna use this electric guitar as an example, although I'll talk about acoustic guitars as well. So let's talk about some things that you ought to check uh, when you're looking at a used guitar. In terms of an electric guitar, you wanna check the electronics. Does the selector switch work? adjust this a little bit. Does the selector switch work to, to choose the correct pickups? Does it work without sounding awful, scratchy, and horrible? Do the pots work? Do they smoothly uh, change the volume or the tone? Are they scratchy? If they're scratchy, it's not the end of the world. Uh, in many cases, somebody like me or maybe even you can clean the pots and make them turn smoothly again. So that's something that you can still get a good used equipment with pots that are dirty. Worst comes to worst, you can replace the pot. It's not that expensive, but in most cases, I'd say 75% of the time, I can clean them up and make them good again. Um, pickups, I can't tell you how often I hear from somebody who says, I think there's something wrong with my pickups. It's almost never that there's something wrong with their pickups once in a while. It's mostly something in the electronics. It's, it, there, there's a scratchiness in the jack or, or the switch or the pots and they make an assumption it's the pickups. Most of the time, it's not. Uh, the same answer that I would give with the, uh, the switch is, is true of the jack. If the, <laughs> the jack doesn't work, there's a problem. Um, and you should walk away probably from that guitar. But if the jack is scratchy, it probably just needs to be cleaned out. Worst comes to worst, they can be replaced. They're not expensive to replace. Other things to look for, uh, you know, how are the frets? Are they very worn? You know, if they're very worn at a minimum, there's gonna be a lot of fret leveling work to do. At a maximum, they may need to be replaced, and it's quite possible with an inexpensive guitar that replacing the frets is not worth it. So look at how worn the frets are with a used guitar. Um, the same is true of the nut and the saddles. Particularly on an acoustic guitar, uh, is the nut worn? If the nut is worn, often it can be fixed Sometimes it has to be replaced. The same is true of the saddle. It's not the end of the world. If everything is really good about the guitar and it needs a new nut, it's not that expensive to do. But if you've got 10 things wrong with the guitar, including it needs a new nut, then maybe it's not worth uh, dealing with. Same thing is true with the saddle, both on electric guitars and uh, on an acoustic guitar. On an electric guitar, you would certainly want to look and see are the saddles all the way down to the surface of the instrument? Does somebody, in order to lower them, have to lower them all the way down? The same thing can be true of an acoustic guitar. People will take the bone or the plastic saddle on an acoustic guitar and shave it way down. That's a good indication that they were having trouble with the string height. And so in order to try to compensate, they shaved the saddle way down. That's a red flag. It doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad guitar, but it could mean it's a bad guitar. Um, so you want to look at that. If the string height is high, 
and the saddle is all the way down because somebody tried to get it lower, it could be a red flag. Take, take that into account. On some electric guitars like this Fender, the neck can be removed, the guitar can be shimmed, you can change the angle of the neck and, and, and save your saddles. But a lot of electric guitars are not like that and certainly acoustic guitars are not like that. And it's quite possible in a human environment like here in the Philippines on an acoustic guitar, if the guitar has taken on moisture and the bridge has risen, you now have very poor string height and not a whole lot you can do about it other than major work on the guitar, which isn't worth it for that inexpensive used guitar. Uh, and another thing you want to check are your, your tuning machines. Do they all work relatively well? In other words, they turn, they turn effectively. They're not, they're, one isn't broken. Because you may think, oh, it's only one, I'll replace it. Well, chances are you're going to end up replacing the whole set, and now you have a cost for doing that. Uh, on the other hand, it's not unusual for a used guitar for the, the tuners to be a little loose. Somebody needs to tighten something. That's readily doable. But are the, are the tuners actually broken or damaged to the point that you cannot tune the strings? That's a guitar you want to take a hard look at and consider whether it's really worth purchasing. Um, the cosmetic stuff may not be important to you, but certainly the mechanical, the structural, and the electronic stuff is important. On an acoustic guitar, and I, unfortunately I get this a lot, the person will say, I, don't, I, I just bought this used guitar, the guitar is nice, but I get no sound out of the, the pickup. This can be many, many things. And I, I can spend hours trying to diagnose what's wrong. And at the end of the day, it may be replace the pickup. And you have to decide first whether the ability to play amplified on the acoustic guitar is important to you. And then second, are, are you willing to now go and spend, you know, uh, two, 3,000 pesos on a decent uh, pickup for your acoustic guitar? on electrics, it's, 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 they're more module, and so things can be more readily and easily and inexpensively replaced. As I said, you can swap out the switch or a, or a pot or even the jack for not too much money. So if everything else in the guitar is good, but the jack is a little bad, it can be replaced and, and that's probably worth it. But if, uh, now, the last but not least issue is the truss rod. I cannot tell you how many times I've gotten somebody who's brought in a used guitar um, and nobody checked the truss rod. And I'm trying to do a setup and yet can't turn the truss rod. Now, whether the rod is broken, which is possible, or whether the, the nut uh, is stripped and therefore it's difficult to turn, there can be a lot of problems. And people say, oh, Dave, can't you just take the fingerboard off and put in a new truss rod? Yeah, you can, but is it worth it on a $100 guitar? No, it's not. <coughs> so you want to look and make sure the rod turns. Now, there's one other issue here in the Philippines, and, and it's true everywhere else, which is people buy used instruments and they have them shipped to them. They don't get to see it in person. This is, this, is, this is a risk. There is absolutely a risk if you don't know the seller and trust his or her judgment. I would say take some of those key elements and make them demonstrate to you that they work. Have somebody turn that trust rod and show you that it works. Have somebody do a brief video showing you that the electronics work. Uh, and what the guitar generally sounds and plays like. Uh, have somebody tell you what the string height, let's say at the 12th fret is, so that you get an idea, does it have a string of height problem? Uh, those are the kinds of things that I would do before I would buy a used instrument that doesn't have a warranty. So anyway, that's, those are just some thoughts off the top of my head about buying a used guitar. And, and, and I know everybody who's made some of these mistakes at some point in time, including very experienced players and players who 
bought and sold dozens of guitars and then they buy a guitar and it turns out to have a big problem and, and they don't, they're not sure how to resolve it. And it usually ends up costing a lot of money to resolve it. So, but don't get me wrong, I'm happy when I'm able to take an older guitar that's brought to me, put a little bit of effort into it and bring it back to life and make it as good as new. But sometimes you can't make that used guitar as good as new. And I do the best that I can to get it as good as it can be in the condition that it currently is in. So, I appreciate uh, your support. I'd love to hear comments from you about experiences you've had buying and selling used guitars uh, because it's, it's done an awful lot. But, you know, be careful out there and know who you're dealing with and know the kind of instrument you're dealing with. Thanks.